Happy New Year, Cancer. We open the year really, really strong with a full moon in your sign. So Cancer risings, Cancer moons, and if you're both, wow, lucky, lucky you. This is going to be a general forecast for your rising sign or moon sign. And if you would like a detailed, personalized reading, you can find my information in the description box below or just look up Guru Grit in your search engine. Let's start with January the 6th, hosting your full moon in the sign of Cancer, obviously your home and you're the sign of the home. This moon will aspect the house of relationships. So if there's some sort of habit or pattern that you're hoping to get out of this year, this will be the week to drop it. So we open the first week of the year really, really powerfully in this sense, which is very nice. If there's anything you don't want anymore in your life, you can really put that energy out now to get rid of that. I would encourage you to dream very, very big because you still have Jupiter going through your 10th house, really blessing you. So he's going to move into your 11th house. So the first four and a half months of the year, you still have some career help with Jupiter going through there. Now, Shortly after, he leaves on May the 16th. In July, we have the North Node moving into the 10th house. Wow. So you might, just a, a word, just a word, because it did happen to me and I wouldn't have believed. I actually didn't believe it when any astrologer told me. My teacher's nobody. <laughs> But when the North Node, it's the um, North Node rules illusions and things that aren't really real. And he can really shake things up very suddenly, okay? It is a malefic. When it made its transit through my 10th house, I changed careers and I called everybody crazy for telling me that would happen. But guess what? It happened. It did. I'm on YouTube now and I'm talking about astrology. So I went to university for so many years. So I don't know for what. But in case you are fired, quit, made redundant, if you they make your position obsolete. It doesn't matter. You can change your whole career now. You have a 18 month window where something might get shaken up. Hey, your boss could quit. You become the boss. You leave. You work somewhere else. You become self-employed. And I think everyone's fantasy. You become your boss's boss. A little karmic retribution. But all these things can surely happen. If you stay where you are, as I said, you could become a manager, get a new manager or become the person in charge but go with the flow because there can be some stunning changes which you did not expect. So just flow with it. It is rather hard to predict, as I said, and I, I gave you a personal anecdote. So just vibe with it. Open up your spirit to anything being possible. Traveling for work also becomes a possibility working with foreigners, working for the inter international arm or global branch of a company hired in one of those institutions also becomes a possibility for you now. So it really is your time to make your mark on the world with your career. Now for money, Venus is going to be spending a lot of time in your second house. Aren't you so, so lucky? Venus normally doesn't spend this much time in any sign, but once in a blue moon, it does happen. So from the first week of June all the way to the first week of October to October the 8th, Venus will be in the sign of Leo in your second house of your assets, your actual money, money that you make, that you earn to sustain yourself. It's the house that rules your literal wallet. You might buy a beautiful wallet. Hey, it could help a little bit. You never really know. But in any case, it looks as though you will have some help in earning. And especially because Venus is so lazy, some kind of passive income idea might come to you at this time. Venus also helps us speak sweetly and more lovingly when she moves through the second. So that could also help in terms of negotiations and trying to ask for a raise and secure a better salary. So speaking of beautiful things like more money, let's consider what else it's very good for very, very practically. Well, the second rules one's face. So you could be perceived to be, I mean, Cancer Rising is to me already the most beautiful, but more, even more beautiful with Venus going through there. If you're thinking of something quite practical, as I said, like plastic surgery or getting some kind of procedure to the face, this is possible. However, I do warn not to do it during the retrograde period. Mark these, mark these dates down and my words. 
from July the 22nd to September the 3rd. I would take a few days on the outside of that just as a precaution. Beautification will occur no matter what. Money matters are favorable, very much so, no matter what. You can really ask for things and get them now. But as I said, June the 5th, October 8th, very nice. But the 22nd of July to the 3rd of September, do not do anything to your face procedurally, medically, etc. We get the gist. Now, as Venus is in the second house, she's aspecting the eighth. Ooh la la, that's lovers. So really, get ready. You might deepen your existing relationship in a more intimate way. Another thing that could happen is in terms of finances, the eighth house is really unexpected modes of income. Maybe you get a better tax return this year. Or... On the off chance, you have some kind of pool at your work, uh, a raffle or something like that. You might win something because it's unexpected monetary gains. So really, you're having some wonderful blessings through this aspect come through. Either way, I definitely wish you my heartfelt best. <laughs> we all win. Rising tides raise all ships. So you might even move in the second half of the year. Surely do be sure to check in on your mom and see how she is feeling. One thing I would surely like to mention is with Saturn moving out of your eighth house, if you are partnered and your spouse has had some issues with money or saving money or holding on to money, or they've been demoted or lost their job, hopefully they will find work in the spring as Saturn moves on March the 7th into the sign of Pisces, which now brings us back to the single people once again. If you are with someone but not really sure if you'll be serious about them, this is the time to, some people might just fall out of your life that don't need to be there. Why? Because the ninth is the house of legalities and beliefs and legal institutions. And marriage is a document that is legally recognized and it is an institution. So Saturn here could make you take this a lot more seriously and it can help you solidify a bond by the signing of a lease or through marriage and ceremony or if you don't have anyone, you might meet someone in the next two and a half years from March the 7th till May the 24th, 2025, while he is there keeping a hold on you and your ambitions, making you work very, very hard for the things that you want. This is about your beliefs. So if you're interested in hard work, if you're interested in marriage or all of the above, he's going to make sure that you get to where you're going. But you've really got to put in that work. As one of my favorite sayings goes, no man ever drowned in his own sweat. So... Keep everything tidy and plan for any and all travels. Studying is favorable. Authority figures really can rub you the wrong way in this two and a half year window, including our fathers. So be sure to pick your battles. In terms of health, I could see some things here with water retention. So be sure to stay active and take light walks. Do your best to avoid stress to the best of your ability. There is a lot of uh, movement and shaking up in terms of your love life this year. So even the fifth, you know, the fifth ruler, Mars, is retrograde as the year opens going through your 12th house. This could also disturb your sleep and give you a hard time with travels and can cause losses in, in I mentioned career at the start. So some kind of shakeup could occur. But back to relationships, you could leave one and then find another one. Now, Mars goes direct on the 13th of January, but he stays in the 12th until the 13th of March, which afterwards he will enter your sign, which will give you a huge boost of energy in the spring, which is wonderful. You'll feel alive again, like you're being reborn. Now, Mars in the first does make us very energetic, but he also makes us a bit restless. So make sure you burn off that extra energy and that you don't lash out or jump to conclusions and are not unnecessarily combative. So try to keep that under control to the best of your ability, especially while at work, because he's your 10th ruler debilitating in the first. Now, as I said at the start, hey, if things don't work out, that's all right. You are the sign that has the most opportunity for work expansion 
this year. So just do your best to minimize stress and try your hardest not to sweat it. As I said earlier with that Venus, money is looking so blessed and being softly and sweetly spoken is your superpower for 2023. So ask and ye shall receive. I wish you all the best. If if you would like a personalized, detailed reading, you can find my information below the description box. I wish you health, happiness, and so much love for this year, Cancer. I wish you all the best. Bye-bye for now.